Well, it's not the back front porch, but uh, I call it behind the buck and shoots. And uh, the last, uh, oh, when I was riding bucking horses and bulls, and when he went behind the buck and shoots, that was kind of the private place. The arena was where the public saw everything and everything happened, but behind the buck and shoots, that was kind of your private place if you were entered. And now I see these days, uh, everybody comes back behind the buck and shoots. And it's not as private and quite as sacred of a place as it used to be, but it's kind of like the front porch. It's a good place to be. Anyway, the last uh, week and a half or so, I have been doing a lot of things that involve regenerative agriculture or restorative agriculture, whatever you want to call it. And it's all about raising animals. And so uh, I want to talk a little bit about that today. So regenerative agriculture has been happening since the beginning of time. Grazing animals, undulants, whatever, hooved animals, cloven hooved animals, they graze the grass that the roots and everything, there's more, if you really know about it, there's more live animal weight under the soil than there is above. And that all is a life of its own underneath there, just like behind the buck and shoots. And then uh, that life under there breaks things down, brings it up out of the ground, and then sunshine and animals and all rain and all the things that happen up above the ground creates this regenerative cycle and so over the years when man come along we started first of all there was the natives and the the people of the land and uh, they just kind of lived with that and then the first thing that happened is is when uh, let's say the u.s fences came and whenever you put a fence up and stop the migration and movement of animals then you create the need for man to start thinking and working to keep that cycle going the way that Mother Nature had a plan. I had to check my dogs. They're in the arena. They're not behind the bucket shoots, I hope. They're staying in the arena. So, so that is the whole concept of, so but when man came along, we put fences up and then we got chemicals, we got all these different ideas and things and, and we can either enhance regenerative culture or hurt it. And that's man's job, I believe, in this day and age. First of all, we've got to make a profit. So how do you do that? Replicate what Mother Nature and keep the soil good, the health of the world good, through uh, with man's use of agriculture and the making of food. So grazing animals have been around forever. And uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of negative thoughts on grazing animals, especially cows, adding to climate change or global warming, whatever you want to call it. Well, I just don't see how something has created the worth and the regenerative agriculture for so long can all of a sudden now be bad. And what I think has happened is, is uh, a man has consumed so much, and that's the problem. It's not, it's not grazing animals or whatever we're doing, it's consumption. And how we eat all this stuff and do all these things and, and uh, overdo, 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 overdrive everything, and uh, now we have become Somehow we have to blame animal agriculture. I think that's wrong. There's lots of different ways to look at it, but in the last week, as I said, I've week and a half, two weeks, I've really been exposed to a lot of regenerative agriculture. I went to South Dakota, and uh, I uh, went to the South Dakota Grazing Lands Coalition, and was at Riley Cameron's place, his family, they are really doing a lot of regenerative agriculture with uh, grazing animals, cover crops, and fences. When I got back from there, I uh, talked to a guy from Australia that's around here in the bucket board world, Scott Maines, and he started telling me about all the things he's doing in his Buckenboro world because of the drought that happened in Australia. He changed his whole operation to regenerative agriculture and he's tied it in with the Buckenboro world. Then I went to uh, Arkansas last week and the folks who bought that ranch, it has been continuously grazed that they, they bought and chemicals and weeds and everything has been controlled by man and chemicals and set stock grazing and the place is kind of in a mess and they're gonna try to restore it with regenerative agriculture. The more we learn, the better we get. And uh, we, like, we need chemicals, we need modern technology, we need vaccines, we need antibiotics, we need all that stuff. 
But we also can't get overdone and let it ruin the soil health, those microbes, those everything underneath that creates a world, the uh, cycle in this world. And uh, that's where I think we need to go. Where's the balance? Right here at this place, the DNH Cattle Company, they feed everything, they graze everything, they use a lot of chemicals, and, and they're, it's making it work. But the question we have to ask ourselves, could we change that to make it better? And I don't know, I'm not sure. But uh, we still have to make a profit and make this sustainable, profit-wise, and keep the grass growing and the cycle going. So that's the big question of the day. And I think that's uh, where I wanna go in this world, and I think that's something that you should think about as well regenerative agriculture, and how can we use grazing animals, whether they're bucking bulls or grass-fed beef or feedlot finished beef, how can we use them to become better and make this world last forever and make it better as we go? That's what it's all about. That's it. <laughs>